Within a few, just a few years of the end of the Vietnam War, the National Archives had accessioned many of the operational and casualty records of that conflict. Uh, the Re Electronic Records Division has records in its custody that are just a few years old, which benefits those researchers who are working on more contemporary research topics. For veterans and their descendants uh, out there who need to find their information quickly, the National Archives makes available records through our access to archival databases, as well as for viewing and downloading from the National Archives catalog. Uh, while the majority of the service records are in the custody of the National Personnel Records Center in St. Louis, the Electronic Records Division can help prove that someone served in the Army during World War II, was a prisoner of war in any of the three major conflicts of the 20th century, was a casualty of Korea, Vietnam, or in many cases at any point during the latter half of the 20th century. We also have available records about medals that were awarded to service members, as we often get inquiries from individuals looking to replace a lost award. To wit, we can sometimes verify the award that was given, but the replacement medal will be issued by the corresponding military branch. While I and my colleagues look forward to speaking with our veterans and our family members, uh, one of the primary access tools available to researchers, and especially genealogists, is NARA's Access to Archival Databases, or AAD. Uh, AAD contains more than 120 million individual records uh, across 64 different series. AAD covers subjects ranging from genealogy, personal history topics like immigration and military casualty and service records, which we will look at in greater detail in this presentation, to government spending and international relations, to name just a couple of examples. Uh, the greatest feature of AAD is that it takes the raw statistical data and presents it in a user-friendly format to search and view individual records. Uh, AAD is one of the most popular tools used by researchers, receiving more than 2.5 million hits per year, an average of about 9,000 hits in a, in a year. A good analogy to, to describe AAD is that they are the, the self-service gas pumps of the National Archives. A researcher can pull up to the portal, get what they're looking for with relative ease. Uh, if you're looking for one individual record, what happened to your buddy in Vietnam? What year did your grandfather enlist in the Army in World War II? What was the name of the ship that brought your ancestors to the United States? These answers can all be found in AAD. In a few moments, I will we'll demonstrate the relative ease in which you can search and display records in AAD. An additional research, a resource that is now available to researchers are data files that are available through the National Archives catalog for either downloading and or viewing. Over the past few years, the staff at the Electronic Records Division have made available over 100 series for download through the catalog, amounting to more than 1.2 billion records. Uh, shortly, I'll illustrate the ease of accessing records through the catalog, though without downloading over one billion records. Uh, I will also point out that many of the series available on AED have also been made available for downloading through the National Archives catalog. Through the differences between the catalog and a though the differences between the catalog and AED are significant, AED presents the data in a raw the raw data in a user-friendly, individual-based format. The, the records available for download are presented in their native formats and contain the entirety of the raw data file which need to be viewed in a software reader that can load the data in such a way that researchers can review the entire data set as opposed to one individual record. To use the gas pumps analogy again, AAD provides gasoline to run your car while the catalog is pumping out crude oil in need of refinement to make it usable. If you're looking for records that can satisfy many facets of an inquiry, for example, how many people named Johnson served in the United States Army during World War II, you may want to download the entire World War II Army enlistment file, sort and manipulate the data to find that answer. Of course, you can also find that answer through some advanced searching in AED, but you may have heard a little something about big data 
and how much fun it can be, and downloading the entire file allows them to do that. At the National Archives, we endeavor to connect with customers, and one of the ways we do that is that we, through a series of reference reports that are available from the Electronic Records Division on the National Archives website, all of the reference reports are available at the link seen at the top of the slide. And regarding World War II resources, there are two reports to assist researchers with records specific to the Second World War. In the area of electronic records, records includes the World War II Army enlistment records, which is one of our most popular series, as well as POW records. In addition to the reference reports, there are several reference information papers, or RIPs, concerning military service records. For World War II, the RIP is number 78, Personal Participation in World War II, also known as the American Soldier Surveys. For the next major conflict of the 20th century, the Korean War, there are two reference reports and a listing of casualties from Korea at the state level. The first reference report is titled, Records of U.S. Military Casualties Missing in Action and Prisoners of War from the Era of the Korean War, and covers primarily POW records and casualty figures. Uh, using records described in this report, staff in the Electronic Records Division were able to determine that there were no female nurse fatalities as a result of enemy activities in Korea. There was one fatality, a nurse named Genevieve Smith, who died en route to her post but was not considered a casualty of war, but across all the military branches, there were no nurses killed as a result of enemy action. Uh, in 2008, staff used records from the Defense Co Conflict Analysis System to create state-level casualty lists for both the Korean and Vietnam Wars. So if you're looking for a list of casualties from a particular town or city across the United States, the state-level lists are a good resource to find that information. There are several documents to assist researchers in finding records regarding the Vietnam War. The first two listed on the slide list multiple series available through AED and or from the catalog, as well as data files that are not yet available online, but may be ordered from the Electronic Records Division. The first report, titled Electronic Data Records Relating to Military Objectives and Activities During the Vietnam War, concerns an overview of electronic records relating to military objectives and activities in the Vietnam War. Parenthetically, it's noteworthy that the increase of electronic records from the Vietnam War is a direct result of the increase in the use of computers by the military during the Vietnam War. Uh, this report is more about stuff than people, air sorties, naval maneuvers, ground operations carried out in Southeast Asia, incidents that occurred as a result of conflicts with the Viet Cong, along with records concerning movement of troops, materials in and out of the Vietnam theater of operations. The second report, records of U.S. military casualties missing in action and prisoners of war from the era of the Vietnam War provides an overview of the electronic data records in the custody of the National Archives that relate to U.S. casualties, missing in actions, or prisoners of war. Uh, there's another reference information paper, number 90, titled A Finding Aid to Records of American Prisoners of War and Missing in Action from the Vietnam War, which contains a section concerning electronic records. As referenced in the previous slide, there's also a state-level casualty list for Vietnam War fatalities, created from the DCAS data files. Using the DCAS extract files, electronic record staff also created a casualty statistics reference report, which identifies casualties in Vietnam by category, location of casualty, home state of record, whether the incident was considered hostile or non-hostile, and, and by the year of the casualty. This reference report also identifies casualties by several other factors, including race, gender, and religion. So let's look specifically at the series of records regarding military service that are available from the Electronic Records Division. Uh, the first item here on the list, records of duty locations for Naval Intelligence Personnel, or Naval Group China as we refer to it, contains information about military intelligence personnel serving in China during World War II. 
Uh, this series is available through AAD as well as for download from the catalog. And that's uh, indicated there where it says AAD or NAC. Those are the two uh, places where you can go to access those, that information. The second item on the list, World War II Army Enlistment Records, or Army Serial Number File, or ASNF, is one of our most popular series in our holdings, including high use by NARA staff at the National Personnel Records Center in St. Louis. As many of you may know, there was a fire at the NPRC in 1973, which resulted in the loss of hundreds of thousands of official military personnel files, or OMPFs. And the creation of the ASNF was one step in the reconstruction process to ensure that our veterans could and would receive their rightful benefits. The NPRC uses AAD to verify World War II service. The ASNF con contains more than 9 million records of men and women who joined the United States Army between 1938 and 46, excluding officers. The serial number file is easily searchable through AAD, and for those individuals looking to do a more comprehensive statistical analysis on the entire data file, they may download the entire data file from the catalog. Also available from the Electronic Records Division are a series of records entitled American Soldier in World War II Surveys, 1942 to 45, that contains information on soldiers' attitudes toward job assignments, medical care, food quality, leisure time activities, opportunities to advance in the Army, women in the military, and race relations, among other subjects. There are also two series of records concerning prisoners of war during World War II. Uh, the first series has information about U.S. military officers and soldiers and U.S. and some allied civilians who were prisoners of war and internees. Uh, while the first series is available through AAD and for download from the catalog, the second series, World War II Prisoners of the Japanese, were, is currently only available through AAD and it contains information on military personnel as well as a few civilians who were prisoners of the Japanese. The series includes records principally derived from the larger series previously discussed and supplemented with military organization and other information. So in four of the five series, you can search in AAD for an individual record for someone that served in Naval Group China, enlisted in the Army, or were prisoners of war. For the first four, you could also download the entire data file to look at the big picture and try and find multiple situations. For example, everyone from a particular town or city, everyone interned at a, pr at a prisoner of war at a specific camp. Now please note again that you can accomplish all of this through AAD with some advanced searching, but if you were trying to satisfy a larger hypothesis, downloading and manipulating the entire data file is an avenue to explore. The soldier surveys, as I mentioned earlier, are available for download. Now, moving on to the next conflict of the 20th century, the Korean War. There are five series of records that contain individual information about American service members who were either killed in the service of their country or were prisoners of war. All five of these series are searchable in AAD and available for download from the National Archives catalog. The first two series, records of repatriated Korean conflict prisoners of war and records of American prisoners of war, contain information on approximately 4,500 former prisoners of war from Korea. At this point in time, POWs were considered casualties of war. There are records for soldiers, and they include a variety of personal information that are found in the records, including the soldier's serial or service number their date of capture and later release, along with the name of the POW internment camp where the individual was held. Also available for download from the National Archives catalog as well as for searching in AAD are two sets of files that cover casualty information from the 1950s through military operations into the early 2000s. The Defense Casualty Analysis System extract files that I was referencing earlier are subjects, subsets of the larger system and cover Korea and Vietnam, while the full files cover all casualties from around the world, including casualties 
that occurred during peacetime or away from a specific theater of operations. The next two series contain both casualty information from the K Korean War. The first, records of military personnel who died as a result of hostilities during the Korean War, or as we refer to it, KCCF, contains selective descriptive data about US military personnel who died in battle during the Korean War as reported on the Department of Defense Form 1300 Report of Casualty, as well as from each of the four military services of the Department of Defense. Information found in the casualty records include a wide range of personal information, including the branch of military in which they served, the POW's hometown, their year of birth, and the situation under which they became a POW. The second series, Records on Korean War Dead and Wounded Army Casualties, or TAGA Corps, contains information about US Army officers and soldiers who were casualties in the Korean War. There are more than 27,000 records for those who died, and the remaining 82,000 records are non-fatal Army casualties. The records on each casualty contain a lot of information, but include the pertinent information, the individual's name, service number, place, type, and date of casualty, as well as the POW's hometown. As with all the World War II resources, all of the series listed here may be searched through AAD and or downloaded from the catalog based on the needs of the researcher or the nature of their inquiry. So now let's move on to the next conflict of the 20th century, the Vietnam War. As I mentioned earlier, the Electronic Records Division holds several series regarding Vietnam, partly in response to the increased use of computers during that time period. In the area of casualty records, we hold four series of records pertaining to that conflict. DCAS, which I referred to in the previous slide, also covers Vietnam. Also available is a series of records containing multiple files two of which are available for download from the catalog as well as for searching in AAD. CACCF contains information about US military officers and soldiers who died, were missing in action, or prisoners of war in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War. As with KCCF, the records are generated from the information submitted on Form 1300, the individual report of casualty. There are both final and non-final records. A data field in each record distinguishes between the two types of records. There is a similar series of records titled Records of Deceased, Wounded, Ill, or Injured Army Personnel, including Dependents and Civilian Employees, also known as TAGSEN, which contains information about US Army personnel and their dependents who died or were injured worldwide, including missing in action and prisoners of war. Tagsin is searchable both in AAD as well as for download from the catalog. The final series on, a, on the list is a collection of records that were donated to the National Archives by a gentleman named Richard Kofelt, hence the name. In the early 1980s, in response to a demand from veterans, Mr. Kofelt began a project to identify units down to the company, battery, and troop level for US Army deaths in the Vietnam War. After about 10 years, two others joined Kofelt in the research effort and in 2001, the project expanded to include unit information for service members from the other branches of service who died in the Vietnam War. The information found in this series contains information on US military officers and soldiers who died as a result of either a hostile occurrence, including while missing in action or were a prisoner of war, or a non-hostile occurrence in the Southeast Asia theater during Vietnam. In particular, it provides unit information for more than 37,000 of the 38,000 casualties from the US Army, more than 11,000 of the 14,000 from the Marine Corps, and 1,700 of the 2,584 from the US Air Force, and 2,200 of the 2,564 from the US Navy. Uh, this series is searchable in AAD, but it is not currently available for download. Now, in addition to the casualty records, the Electronic Records Division holds a number of operational records regarding the Vietnam War. The operational records reflect an extensive data collection effort intended to improve the conduct of the war. The data in these operational records cover military logistics, pacification programs, and additional aspects of the war. Collected data could easily be analyzed and statistical evaluation performed 
which allowed defense officials to assess the direction of the war. Some of the operational records covered include Viet Cong and North Vietnamese actions against the South Vietnamese, military operations that took place in Cambodia, data about air sorties, ground operations, naval exercises, and other military exercises from forces serving in the region during the Vietnam War. There are also some data files regarding defoliant spraying, including the use of Agent Orange. There are also files on the Vietnam experience as on selected Army personnel who served in Vietnam during 1967 and 68. The final item on the list is a series of records that's not necessarily about death, but about recognition for service and contains information about some of the awards and decorations of honor awarded to US military officers, soldiers, and sailors, along with allied foreign military personnel. The awards and decoration system, or AWADS, is not a complete list of all awards and decorations of honor presented during the Vietnam War. AWADS is available for searching in AAD as well as for download from the catalog. So now that you have all that information at your fingertips, let's go walking through the records. So if the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get to the AAD homepage. So open that up a little bit. So if you're on the National Archives homepage and you wanted to search in AAD, you would go here to this first rectangle here on the left under Research Our Records. And you can click on that, and that's going to bring you to this next page. And you'll see right here under this next to the mouse, you would search for access to archival databases, which would bring you to the AAD homepage. Let me bring that out a little bit. All right. All right. So then from this page, you can search. In AED, you can search, you can free text search under the green banner. You can browse by category. All of the categories are listed here, as well as browsing by subject. And say all of the subjects that are covered in AAD can be found here on this list here. But for our intents and purposes, the first thing what we're going to do is um, when I was talking about Genevieve Smith. Say, so we were able to determine that Genevieve Smith died en route to her duty station. So therefore, let's, we're going to plug her in right at the top of the AAD search box. And we're going to click search. And now this is searching across all of the series in AAD. And it's going to return. 22 records across four series. Now you'll note here on this list, none of these are the casualty databases. However, if you go down here to the history data file for the awards information management system, this is different than AWADS, this is something else called AIMS. You'll, when you pull that up, you'll get two records out of the more than one million records available in Ames. So you'll see that uh, Nurse Smith was given the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal. Okay, the award was approved. One of them was approved in 1987, and then another one was approved in 1993. Uh, many of the awards listed in Ames were done retroactively as the Department of Defense went back and entered this information into this new system of AIMS. So, and then here you can see the award that was given to the Navy Reserve Officer Genevieve M. Smith, Lieutenant Commander, part of the Judge Advocate General Corps. All right, so. Now what we're going to do is um, one of the other inquiries that we get quite often is um, 
My grandfather enlisted in World War II, and we always believed that he enlisted in World War II when he was too young. That, you know, he lied about his age. And what we often have to tell researchers is say, I'm sorry, but the information that we have is that your grandfather was 18 when he enlisted in World War II. Now, there is one gentleman who served in Vietnam who, when he joined up, said he was 18. But then, unfortunately, in 1969, when he was killed in action in 1969, it was retroactively discovered. And actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to go, I'm going to go here. It was determined that he was not, in fact, 18, but he was 15. So but this was only determined later. So to say, when you look at um, the combat area casualty uh, current file, the CACCF that I referenced earlier, You, will, you can scroll down here, and you'll see that he died June 7th, 1969. And when you look at his full record, it will show a date of birth of December 21st, 1949. But then later, it was determined that Mr. Bullock was actually born December 21st, 1953. So therefore, he had lied about his age to get in. And then unfortunately, in 1969, when he was killed, he becomes the youngest casualty in Vietnam. Then there is, of course, no greater honor in serving our country during times of war. And when you went off to war, you fully expected that you could, in fact, lose your life in some sort of hostile activity. Now, because all sorts of data was collected, um, there are three or two instances in which two individuals um, died under, well, they're specifically speaking non-hostile, but they are hostile in as fact as these two individuals were killed by a tiger in Korea. So uh, Terry Lee Armstrong and Gerald Ray Olmsted were, as he says, see here, killed by a tiger. Um, so these two individuals went off to serve their country in Korea. And unfortunately, while on patrol, they wandered into the jungle and met some wildlife, which ended their lives. Now, the other one that I'm going to point out as far as searching in AAD uh, is There was a gentleman who um, wanted to, well, maybe it's not that he wanted to. He joined up and he served in the uh, Vietnam War with a rather interesting name. Don Leroy Deathrage Jr. I mean, he's kind of 
kind of a name born to be a soldier if your name is Death Rage. Um, but so yeah, this individual died in, Viet uh, in Vietnam on June 17th, 1967. And he was born uh, February 24th, 1947, so he was 20 years old when he died. So, so those are some examples that you can do to search in AED. And now we're going to look at the other side of the house and see how easy it is to search records in the catalog. So again, I'm going to go back just to show you the pathway to access records from the catalog. Again, from the home page of the National Archives, you click on Research Our Records. And then the top bulleted item here, the National Archives Catalog, will bring you to the Archives Catalog. And you can search in this box by any sort, any keyword searching that you'd like to do. Uh, if you happen to know uh, all of the items described in the National Archives catalog have a certain National Archives identifier, uh, which is a seven digit number or a six or seven digit number, which you can bring you right to the series description. So for our purposes here today, I'm gonna uh, just go ahead, but the first one that I'm gonna pull up is uh, World War II POWs. That National Archives identifier is 1263907. All right, so that's going to bring up these World War II prisoners of war data file. Okay. And this, what this does is it brings you directly to the download page. This is where you would land if you wanted to download the entire data file. You can scroll down, you can see here is the entire description for this particular data file. Uh, you can see that it is part of this records of World War II prisoners of war, okay, created by the War Department, okay, covers, uh, these were punch card records that were later, you know, made available and now say, now we've made available the data files for downloading through the catalog. <laughs> Excuse me. So when we made these files available through the catalog, we created what we call a technical specification summary, which explains how the data files were in, in fact made available. And that's a PDF document. Okay. And it shows you that these are ASCII fixed length files. Delimiters have been added in. Okay, and that in addition to the data file, there's also uh, a documentation package which contains information that is helpful to help interpret the records themselves, uh, as well as we've also made available some of the unprocessed punch cards from this particular series. So what does a raw data file look like? Well, it looks a lot like this. So this is a list of, as you can see here, all veterans or POWs from World War II. It's an alphabetical list, and you can see there in the sort of right in the middle, it shows you their rank. Uh, it shows you, and then all of these numbers correspond to a particular value, which you can search in AD. So, and as you see here, so for instance, this information right here, Gerald Airy, that's his serial number right there, then that's his name, okay, and service code, so all of this here, and then what you can see here is, so this number 
corresponds to something that, you know, so it's definitely, as I said earlier, more user friendly to search for records in AAD because all of this will be presented to you in a format that's much more easy to read. However, if you want to do some greater statistical analysis, everybody named Abbott, you know, so therefore you could, you know, pull up this entire file, but obviously you can also do this in AAD, but you can also pull all of this together and have all of that information at your fingertips and do your own statistical analysis using any kind of program that will allow you to manipulate the data. Okay. Uh, the next data file that I'd like to show you the ease of downloading and made them, making them available. I'm going to go back here just one second and I'll show you the documentation package. So this is, all right, so therefore you, again, this is a PDF document, very easy. You just, you can look at this and what this will do is show you, so here it is. Here's those codes that we were just talking about. So while we have made that available in AAD, if you were downloading the entire data file, you could pull up this document and then be able to correspond back and forth, be able to match up the codes and see, you know, everybody from the Women's Army Corps were, that were prisoners of war. Find all of the A's, okay? Or, you know, here's something that shows, you know, what's the abbreviation for the Bugler First Class? Yeah, this is a 75-page document. All right, and then here's uh, some of the unprocessed punch cards, as I was saying. All right, so, so there's, that's what we took. We took those cards, except for these, because they were unprocessed. And we were, so this particular individual, John Cutler, was killed in action, but his plane crashed over something, not a POW. So therefore, that's why he's not on the file, because you know this information was unable to be read when the process was undertaken to make these files digitally available. Okay. Now, we're going to go back to the catalog homepage. And the next thing that we're going to have a look at is we're going to look at the Korean War POW file. So this is the Korean War data file of American prisoners of war. As say this, in, this icon here indicates that it is available for download. So you again, this is the landing page. Here's the technical specification summary, the down, documentation package, and there is where you would download the entire data file. And that entire data file looks like that. Okay, again, it's a little cleaner. Again, also searchable in AAD. But here it is, an alphabetical list. All right, these are uh, service numbers. And then again, it's, this is all data that can be evaluated, analyzed, manipulated based on the documentation package that you could go ahead and download and have the entire file at your fingertips. So 
here. Here's the code. Here's some code lists located in the POW camp. So if you're looking for people in a particular camp, you can go ahead and look. Uh, one we l went looking for. Uh, I went did a presentation last year, and we went looking for a particular guy that we knew existed. We knew he was a POW, and uh, we found that he had been interned in, I believe, this camp here. Uh, and that while he was a POW at the Pyeongdong uh, camp, he participated in a camp Olympics. That the, the, their captors made the American prisoners and the other Allied prisoners participate in a camp Olympics with other POW camps. Um, so. All right, and then for our final um, file that we're going to have a look at is is the Vietnam conflict extract data file. All right. So again, this is something. Here again, this is the technical specification summary. Here's the documentation. This is uh, agency electronic documentation that was sent to us by the agency when the files were transferred, and here's some supplemental code lists. Right. And so what does that whole data file look like? Well, it looks like this, provided it opens up. It was being cranky earlier. So this is the extract file. So you can see if you have a problem with a slower computer, you're going to want to stick with the extract file as opposed to the full file. Um, all right, so there, again, here's a lot of information presented in here. Okay, so if you can see, you can just sort of identify any one particular. Here's uh, Richard Abadi. All right. He was an ammunition technician. He was from Elmwood Park in Cook County, U.S., in Illinois. Right. He was married. He was Roman Catholic. He was white. Um, it's not specified. Let's say he was killed in action by small arms fire. Right. So that's just one particular record in the DCAS extract file. All right. Well, thank you all for attending today's Know Your Records presentation on military records available from the Electronic Records Division of the National Archives. It's truly an honor to work at the National Archives and well as assist our veterans and military service members with their needs for records. And I will be happy to take any questions you might have. Uh, and it looks like we have at least one from online. Uh, for photographs, I would primarily uh, send you to the catalog because what you, there are a number of, number of photographs that are available online and that you can download the entire JPEG or the entire GIF file right from the catalog. Uh, AAD is data files and their representation in a digital environment. We do not have photographs in AAD. Uh, you uh, 
used a lot of an acronyms and abbreviations. And uh, you brought up the documentation page with the codes, but I'm wondering if we need, as a researcher, you go into AAD, do you need those abbreviation and acronyms? And if you do, is there uh, maybe a reference report or some guide to spelling those out? In AAD, there is, you can download that same documentation out of AAD. Okay. But yeah. in AAD, as I say, what it will do is it will, manifest itself in, you know, so for instance, so when you see here is, so therefore here is for Mr. Armstrong's record, here's service A means Army, component Y means selective service. So okay. all of the codes are presented in that middle column and their meaning is presented in the third column. And so therefore, and then so you can click on that and it shows you all of the codes for that particular field. Okay. Uh, and then you can also get to the information as well as the data layout up at the top of the AAD page. Okay, and you can download that information in a variety of places. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna hog your time. One last question, and this one is not from me, it's actually from online. Um, so this is, uh, I'm not sure we'll have this, it's a, regarding just after the Civil War. The, uh, the online question is, I have a great grandfather who served just after the Civil War. Later, he changed his name his pension cards after his death list both names. How do I go about locating his pension file? Well, as you might imagine, there aren't a whole lot of electronic records available from the Civil War period. Um, but we, in our, in, the, in our division, we get that question a lot. In fact, I think we just got one yesterday or the day before. And, but Civil War records are in the custody of the reference division here at the National Archives in Washington, uh, so that you would need to contact the archives, uh, archives one reference at nora.gov, which is the holder for Civil War and early military records. Thank you so much, John. Does anybody um, here in the audience have any questions for our presenter before we wrap up? We do, uh, if you don't mind coming to the microphone, the reason we're asking for you to do that is for our, our online audience uh, that are listening and watching on YouTube. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm interested in knowing about your citizen archivist program that I have seen online. And it seems that, um, that you can submit digital images that you've made yourself to your group. And I just wondered if you could talk about that. Uh, well, it's not to my group as opposed to it, if you have photographs and digital photographs, you would submit those to our still pictures unit. Uh, say, and I, I'm not that familiar with the Citizen Archivist program, uh, but I'm sure that uh, we can find that answer for you and we can make sure that we get that information to you. Specifically, there are pictures of load lists uh, from a, a bomb group in World War II. Sure. Yes, right. You can uh, you can send your general inquiries to inquire at nara.gov, and they'll make sure it gets to the right place. Yes, ma'am. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> okay. Um, I've been searching for an American veteran for a, uh, for a gentleman out of Detroit, Michigan, for about ten years. I've been here several times. I have sent in the request form to Missouri, and I've gotten nowhere. I just am trying to find this man. He was a liberator of the Mauthausen concentration camp in Austria, American mm -hmm. Army. Uh, I think it was the 11th Armored Division. How do I find out any information about him? I never gotten anywhere with this website, but I'll try it now that you've you know, suggested So you weren't it. even able to find his enlistment record? Nothing. And I have an organization, a nonprofit. We find people all over the world. Right. And I can't find an American veteran from Chicago. <laughs> 
it's embarrassing. Um, well, I mean, there's a variety of issues that could be could be it with it. Um, for instance, in the serial number file, the, so you said he was Army? I, the only thing I know is his name. This is from a Holocaust survivor who's now 87 years old. He uh -huh. met this American vet in 1945. All he knows is his name, and he's from Chicago, Illinois, America. What was his last name? Rosenthal, Jerome Rosenthal. All the man wants to do, the survivor, is to thank him. Right. And he can't, we can't find him. Well, say, and unfortunately, that window is closing for our World War II veterans. Yeah, yeah. Um, At least his family or someone. I'm, I've been trying on my own to do it, you know, but I'm, I'm not a genealogist. I'm not an archivist. You know, I, I'm at a loss. Do you know his first name? Jerome from Chicago. That's it. That's all he knows. That's all. He was a kid. He was 13 years old at the time of liberation. Uh, someone at College Park at the archives is very helpful, and uh, they told me, suggested checking the census. Yes. But uh, that would be my suggestion as well. Um, but I'm stymied because all I've gotten was, I don't know if it's the same one. Exactly. And all right, so there are four Jerome Rosenthal's in the Army serial number file. Uh, there is one from Michigan. From, did you say Detroit? Chicago. Chicago, okay. The ironic thing is, is there a very famous picture, because I work, my organization works closely with the Holocaust Museum here. There's a very famous picture in, in the historical records of this veteran, Jerome Rosenthal, actually liberating the camp. Mm -hmm. And there's his name and everything and the army designation, but we can't find him. All I know is Chicago. <laughs> right, well say it. So this, that's what came up is four records for Jerome Rosenthal. Uh, Two from New York, one from Pennsylvania, and one from Michigan. Um, so, and then, but there were also one in the Selective Service records. It would have been 1945 that he was in the Army that I know, because liberation was May 7th. Right. And the enlistment records cover um, from 1938 to 1946. Anybody who enlisted in, in the Army during that time period should be in here. Now there were, again, as with the other punch cards that I was uh, referencing, there were some punch cards that were unable to be read. Because of the fire? No, it's because they just, they couldn't be read oh. by, the, by the computers. Uh, the punch cards were kept somewhere other than in St. Louis, which is why we were able to reconstruct okay. all of these personnel jackets. Um, but he, his could be missing because of the fire? That is correct. His, I mean, an, Thousands of personnel folders were destroyed in the fire in 1973. Uh, so it is possible that his information could have been lost in the fire. And I say, given the high profile of Mr. Rosenthal, you would think that you should be able to find information about it. And, you know, and uh, I mean, if you want, you and I can talk some more later, and I can give you some more ideas. I'd as appreciate to, it, because yeah. we're, we're stymied already. Sure. That's why I'm here. So. All right. I mean, I live across the street. It wasn't a big trip. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Thank you. Thank you very you much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you all very much. I guess Andrea has some closing words for you. Thank you so much, John. Um, I would like to add that uh, this reminds me of your questions. If you have questions and you're stumped, you've gone, say, through the census records, uh, if you're doing genealogy work, we have an ongoing uh, genealogy consultation that takes place here. It, uh, you can sign up with an archivist. Uh, that archivist is Claire Kluskins. She's terrific. Uh, and uh, that is under the Know Your Records program. It takes place on various Saturdays. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember the date off the top of my head, but again, we're, it's under the Know Your Records program. So if you were to just do a search on your computer for Know Your Records, it will bring up our web page, and then you can look up when the next program takes place. And you can sit down with Claire Kluskins, that archivist, and she will devote at least 20 minutes of her time just to help you um, get unstuck. So that program is called Help. I'm stuck. 
So thank you again for coming to the Know Your Records program, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.